All right, so Andor season one just finished, and wow, that was 12 episodes of amazing TV. I want to today give my retrospective, I guess partially on the entire series, but really on the last episode. And I do want to address something before I start this episode. I had a lot of people complain or sometimes just ask why I wasn't doing episode breakdowns of each episode. And to me, Andor's not really a show which lent itself well to that type of analysis. I did do videos, of course, on X clips. Those are my shorter videos. Make sure to subscribe to that channel if you haven't already. But I mean, for much of this season, my breakdowns would have simply been, this was great. I want to see what happens next. So we'll do that largely for episode 12. Before we begin, though, I do have a couple of quick messages. First of all, this isn't a paid sponsorship, but I was given a cool Star Wars chair to give away by the guys and gals over at Secret Lab. Now, if you want to be entered into the contest, follow the link in the description, retweet the tweet, and follow myself and Secret Lab. Also, today's video is sponsored by Vite Ramen. I've been working with Vite Ramen for years now. You guys love the brand, and so do I. They love me too, so much in fact that we actually made our own flavor, Masaman Curry. Right now, it's sold out because it's so damn good, but they've got a ton of other great flavors as well. I'd recommend the roasted soy chicken, and the best part is the meals are really easy to make. I mean, if I can do it, that's a good sign. They're delicious. They're super healthy, especially for ramen. Low sodium, low calories, bioavailable nutrients, everything. And you're buying from a small American business which treats their employees really, really well. Right now, you can get 10% off Vite Ramen by going to their website linked in the description or fightramen.com slash Eckhart's Ladder and using the code Eckhart's. You can also check out the really cool launch animation we did for our new flavor. And you'll also get free shipping in the contiguous USA and some gifts. So again, link down below, use code Eckhart's. All right, so back to the review, and I'll give my few negatives I had, really only one or two at the very beginning. I did think it was a little convenient that everyone ended up on Ferrix. Like Cyril, Luthen, I don't know whether they needed to be there, but to be honest, it was worth it in the end. Again, very small complaint. That's all I'd really say about the episode. There were also parts, I guess, towards the end that felt a bit more rushed than the rest of the season, but I guess that's kind of also the nature of a finale. All right, though, season one, episode 12, Rick's Road. This may have been my favorite episode of the series. I'm a big emotional monologue guy, and I really also love how the planet of Ferrix and its people were portrayed. In a lesser Star Wars project, Ferrix would have simply been the place that Cassian came from, would have been probably largely ignored, maybe he would have learned about it being destroyed or something, and it would have been emotional, but instead, this show treated Ferrix like a community, like real people who have come together under hard times. The real heroes of Ferrix are just ordinary people. Barrasso, a construction worker essentially. The guy who owns the communication center. The marching band. When it's time to fight evil and to fight oppression, it's these people that are on the forefront. I just love that. It's a family. It's a community-minded thing. That's what I want out of Star Wars. So I thought that was, was really overall phenomenal. And yeah, the monologue. How can you have so many exceptional performances in one Star Wars TV show? Marva's speech, especially the first time I watched it had me on the edge of my seat and I've revisited it now probably 20 times. This is the most realistic that the Empire has ever been. This is what tyranny is actually like. You don't come away from this show with the Empire could be the good guys feeling. And the way Marva ended her speech and then literally in funeral block form, brains and Imperial, you gotta love it. And it is somewhat bittersweet because she's hyped up all of the people on Ferrix to fight. She recognizes herself that it may not be a winning cause, but it's still better to fight. And stormtroopers whip out blasters. They start firing on civilians. There's bloodshed, but it was still worth it to fight tyranny. I love seeing the reactions of everyone as Ferrix is burning. Luthen, for example, during the speech, you could tell that Marva's words were hitting him and why he chooses to fight. Then afterwards, as he's leaving, he sort of, I think, recognizes that this is what's going to happen as more people fight against the Empire. So it felt to me like he was calculating whether the personal losses were worth it and whether he could live with those on his conscience. Even more interesting, perhaps, was Sergeant Mosk. He's sort of serving as a counter to Cyril Karn. Mosk has now seen what the Empire is really like. He seems shaken during Marva's speech, and afterward we see him on the ground drinking, like he's been changed by what he's seen. I'm actually really curious to see whether this is the end of his character or whether we'll see him maybe at some other point. Either way, so many incredible acting performances during this scene. Every Everyone just really gave it their all. Very emotional, just 
incredible what they managed to do with so many characters who would ordinarily be relegated to the background. And of course, as this is happening, we have Andor breaking into the Imperial HQ to rescue Bix. There were a few moments I really liked during that scene. For one, when he discovers that the cook in there is somebody he knows, no one he wants to shoot, kind of reminded me of the sense of community that everyone has there. The second was when he actually rescues Bix, and she's been through a lot. The marching band, which I haven't even talked about yet, was really helping ground her and the funeral song they were playing. Then when he arrives, she says, Marva was here, and he says, she was great, wasn't she? I mean, I could talk about this section forever. So many great moments. B2, an amazing droid. Cassian returning to Ferrix and reuniting with everyone. Just really great stuff. But there's other stuff to talk about. One really interesting plot thread this season has been Mon Mothma, and her relationship with her family is an interesting one. A lot of people have said that Mon Mothma's daughter is a brat or whatever, because she doesn't like her mom. That's completely missing the point. Mon Mothma has been sacrificing time with her family for her work. Now it is a just cause, but her daughter doesn't know that. And even if she did, it's hard to have a distant relationship with your mother. Anyway, Mon is taking that to a whole new level in this episode as she's setting her husband up to take the fall for the rebellion's credits. Another thing I really thought was interesting is how high Dedra seems to have climbed within the ISB. We see that the director is not talking talking to her like an equal, but giving her a lot of deference and respect. Like, it was almost a consideration for them to wait for her before pulling off the operation. She's certainly risen in the ranks since episode 1, far more than I had realized. Also, goddamn, I was really hoping to see her executed by that crowd. She is just evil. I love that there's absolutely nothing redeeming about her character. She's just evil. She's not a bad guy with good intentions or anything like that. She just wants to gain power within the ISB and do bad things. And of course, she's saved by Cyril. I'm sure the shipping of that will be unbearable until season two. But let's talk about season two. Apparently, it's just started filming now and will be coming out probably in 2024. I've got no idea where this show is going to go. It's really left us at an open spot. Andor is separated from everyone on Ferrix. I hope that doesn't mean we're seeing no more of them. I love that crew, especially the kid who made the homemade bomb. What an absolute chat. I just love the community coming together to help get him off world. I know I've talked about that before, but obviously Andor is, you know, off to join the rebellion. Maybe we'll see Cinta and Vel again at least, but I believe it's been stated that there will be a year time jump between the events of this season and what comes next. Either way, absolutely phenomenal episode. I did not expect Andor to be half this good. I feel like we were really blessed to get a show of this quality with the Star Wars name on it. It really, I hope, changes how people look at Star Wars TV movies moving forward. That being said, I do understand why some people didn't quite like the show. I obviously did. I still think I liked The Mandalorian Season 1 a bit more, perhaps, just because it captured more of what made me really love Star Wars as a kid, but Andor, man, what a show. Anyway, guys, until next time, be safe, have a good one, may the Force be with you.